Good afternoon, everybody. This is Deidre Young, and I am the National Consumer Advisory Board co-chair. And um, along with me is the chair of the National Consumer Advisory Board, Art Rios Sr., here to give us an update on what's going on with the council and around the nation. Art? Hi, everyone. This is Art Rios Sr., as Deidre had said. Uh, so... What's going on at NCAB right now is uh, we're still working on uh, our beginning months of our newsletter. Our newsletters always consist of talking about what's going on with the chair. So always say what is happening, uh, what's going on, what's coming up in our um, newsletter for the month. Uh, this uh, this uh, coming month here in March, we'll have something on the council. Mm -hmm. We'll have something about education. Uh, we'll be spotlighting uh, cab spotlights, uh, some success stories with Deidre, uh, speaking with a couple of our other committee members. Uh, we have some poetry and art. Uh, Charlotte Gardner is uh, really well known uh, throughout the council and throughout the uh, United States with some of the good poetry she has come up with. Very elegant, very honest, very true. And uh, other ways on how to engage with NCAP, uh, that's happening on our newsletter. Um, and if you have any ideals for any stories in education or one in the spotlight, a cab, or even some success stories that's going on within this COVID-19 uh, pandemic that we're having, let us know. Uh, connect with us here at uh, NCAP Connections and we'll put you in the right spot. We have our advocacy uh, group also committee uh, reestablishing some uh, new health and COVID and guidelines uh, for equity and diversity and inclusion. Uh, they've been working very well. Uh, Joanne Garino and uh, Charlotte Garner are uh, co-chairing that uh, committee. Uh, also, what we have going on is uh, soon we will be having our conference in May. So look out for more information to be coming to NCAP Connection to see what other uh, information you'll see to uh, probably attend with us. Uh, yes, it will be virtual, so it will be some Zoom meetings, but uh, we've made it uh, very easy and accessible for people to be able to be on and not in these very long, long, drawn out uh, meetings. It looks like we're going to have anywhere from one to one and a half hour uh, conference meetings. So it's a great time to establish and get these workshops going. Uh, we'll have some other collaboratives with a lot of uh, folks around the country. Uh, so also at the same time, you'll be able to meet some people um, from places that you've never been able to uh, be able to. Next question, Deidre. <laughs> yes, Art. So as far as the newsletter, I know that our next newsletter topic will be moving forward. And what next steps with the um, Biden administration, um, what's coming up, how, how, what, what changes are being made, what opportunities are mm -hmm. going to be coming available. And yes, you're right, I will be doing the CAP Spotlight. And the Spotlight will actually be on um, surviving COVID-19. Um, we've had um, a few members of the council and of our NCAP that has contracted the virus and has um, worked their way through it. So I'm really excited about being able to interview those individuals and I'm very grateful that they were able to um, work through this hardship. Um, I guess what my next question would be to you is how is it going in Portland, Oregon? Portland, Oregon right now, uh, we are looking at a uh, winter storm. Uh, we've had a uh, few inches of snow drop on us over the last couple of days, freezing rain, temperatures drop. Um, so our protocol is uh, for our homeless community that a few sites open for uh, severe weather shelter. Uh, our county and our city has very uh, been dual diligence of trying to make sure to have people uh, volunteer to these sites 
uh, come to the streets, uh, check in with people to see if they want to get off the streets for the night or two nights. Um, this is supposed to last up until about Sunday and Monday. Uh, we'll still have some freezing rains and stuff like that, so we may extend it a little longer uh, for people to stay inside. Uh, it's a great opportunity for the city and the county to uh, build some gentle uh, personalism and some authentic relationships with our homeless community that are out on the streets to find some better solutions and ask those hard questions, what is needed, what is wanted, uh, how they can be better served, uh, what other services or resources they need. Um, just, yeah, with this uh, winter storm, it uh, came out of nowhere. Uh, this winter storm vortex from uh, above us that just came down and uh, not, uh, not a lot of people thought it was going to be uh, this bad, but it happened to be really bad. Um, haven't heard about any deaths or anybody uh, dying out on the streets, uh, but it sort of kind of happens throughout the country that, you know, sometimes somebody does lose their life to bad weather and not trying to be a downer. But I mean, that's that's life of being on the streets and not having the right services and stuff. So we really ask the county and the city to be really dual diligence of really making sure on checking on our homeless community. Right. And I'm glad that, you know, you say they have things in place. I know here in Houston, um, they've opened up some shelters and have made preparations for the winter blast that's coming through here. Um, we should be getting the worst of it, I believe, Monday. Um, Tuesday morning, it's supposed to be, from the last time that I checked, it was like going to be 17 degrees, probably feel like 7 here. And, you know, you know, Houston, we're, we're not used to this type of weather. So Monday, Houston is shutting down. The metro system has already said, hey, we're not going to be running, so everybody stay home. Um, I have been keeping up with the news to see what opportunities they're going to have available for those that are out on the streets here in Houston. Because, yeah, it gets really bad here when the temperatures drop as low as they are, considering we are not accustomed to this type of weather. Right? Yeah, and, and, and I forgot to say that, too. Um, uh, I just heard about uh, two hours ago through an email that uh, all our bus services and our max services are shut down for the day because it was really bad on our tracks and our uh, highways and byways so uh, yeah our services have also shut down um, and and what's funny is that uh, with COVID-19 and some of the restrictions that people had and had to stay in, a lot of our businesses uh, got the opportunity to open up yesterday you know and uh, do in inside dining and people were able to go back to bars and uh, recreations and stuff like that. But then, you know, we had the snowstorm and it sort of kind of put a damper on that. Um, we're still in some very high risk in some of our counties, but we're doing a little bit better than normal. We haven't had as many high uh, count numbers, but, but we're starting to see a lot of deaths. Uh, like, like I said, not trying to be a downer, but... Um, this COVID-19 is uh, doing a doozy. Um, last report that I heard that we had to um, reschedule like 8,000 uh, folks for vaccines. And we just hit the spot where we were doing folks from like 75, 85 years old for vaccines. And then this happened and then 8,000, you know, um, uh, vaccines had to be rescheduled. So yeah, it becomes pretty hard uh, for folks uh, to be able to get out this if we where we still had a couple of places uh, that were still doing vaccines, but it's 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 really hard to travel to uh, when it gets this bad, uh, especially here in Portland, Oregon. Like we really sort of kind of like shut down. Um. I know one of the things that you were talking about earlier you mentioned was the advocacy um, group call that we've been doing now for the past few months. And one of the main topics of discussion was um, how do we get people to be vaccinated? How do we get the homeless population, the underserved, to actually go out and um, get the vaccine? 
Um, I know for myself, I had to share that, yeah, I have not been vaccinated yet, and I am waiting, right? Um, <laughs> I need time. Um, and I would love to reach out to everyone that's watching this. Please feel free to leave a comment or a post on that particular subject. What would make you feel comfortable with getting this vaccine? Because we have our calls every month where we're discussing this topic, um, trying to get people to share their experiences, their fears, or their comfortableness with getting this vaccine. So by all means, you're out there, you're listening, you want to throw in a comment, by all means, please do, because we would like to bring your voice to our conference call. And you are able to join it if you, um, Catherine Cavanaugh has been wonderful on um, posting when our calls are coming through. I mean, when our calls are being scheduled. So you guys pay attention at NCAV Connection. Um, yeah, and I think that this has been a really great conversation with you, Art. Thank you so much for giving me your time. Um, would you like to close us out? Yeah, like... Um, we have cold weather that's hit in the United States. Uh, some places harder hit than others. Uh, we still have COVID-19 uh, testing sites, vaccine sites. People still are showing up in the hospitals uh, to be put on ventilators, you know. Um, I just look at it this way as, like, advocate for so many different people. I don't care if you're rich or you're poor, you're black or you're white. I just look at it that we have the opportunity to treat our human beings, our our friends, our families, our foes, whoever you want to call them, that, you know, uh, they're a human being. Uh, if you see somebody, say something, say hi, buy them lunch, give them a cup of coffee, but also at the same time, understand that they're just trying to survive just like anybody else being out on the streets. Um, let's just be kind to one another. Uh, there's just too many things going on. Uh, we have a new administration in the White House. Let's keep following and listening to what they have to say and, um, you know, be safe. Uh, if you have to go out, uh, wear a mask. They say now wearing two masks is good. Uh, uh, so be it. And for me, as like Deidre was saying, you know, uh, she needs time to uh, take the vaccine. For me, uh, I'm a person of color. I know some of the uh, uh, history of what has happened with vaccines, but I choose to take that vaccine because I'd really like to get back out and work with my community at Ground Zero and that's on the streets, experiences homelessness and just say hi to them again. Uh, because I just don't want to bring it home uh, to my family or my friends. Um, but, yeah, thank you very much, Deidre, for this time, and uh, much love to all. Much, Art. Thank you again for sharing this time with me. And all of you out there in NCAP Connection land, feel free again to leave a comment, your thoughts, your feelings. Um, on this topic or any other topic that you would like to hear spoken upon from us. So again, my name is Deidre Young, and I am with Art Rios Sr., our chair, and we would like to thank you for spending this time with us. Be blessed. Thank you all. Bye-bye.